Hello guys to this build video of the Thunder Tiger Ghost. Last week I showed you a short introduction to the Ghost system and this time you will see how easy it is to install the retractable landing gear, the brushless gimbal and even the FPV system all without having to solder something and with using just simple tools most of them are supplied with the copter. Okay, so the, the mounting of the landing gear is quite simple. You just have to take the right leg, but if you take the wrong one, you will notice that it looks in the, in the wrong direction and doesn't make sense. This side here is on the inside and this clamp style thing here goes to this metal part. Because the simple way this retract works is you have a metal plate here and uh, yeah a screw and if the server moves the screw uh, this metal plate moves and turns the leg this way. All you do is you insert this axle thing here and tighten up the screw the supplied Elm key. And this is one aspect I really am looking forward to have retracts. And I'm doing this with all four. Okay, so I've mounted all the four retracts. And it's a nice and stable impression that it gives you. So here we have the compass unit it's like the DJI's GPS tower but I think this only holds the magnetic compass it should be as far up as possible not to be influenced by any other things from the copter just plug in a cable and screw on two Phillips screws So it's really easy to complete and mount this antenna. Well, it's a trade-off that you have one part of the copter stand up so high. That increases the, the height of this copter uh, for transportation. So if you want to take it on a trip, you just unscrew this part and have seven centimeters less of height and can easily fit this in a box, so it's not super transportable, but uh, I'd rather have a good flying thing with the compass up very high than an uh, ultra-portable thing that doesn't fly so good, so that's okay. Under the hood you have some cables, you have an additional 24 volt cable for another system, so you have two power cables and one gimbal cable that you just um, move through this hole. So everything nicely prepared. Now we have the two cables which will be connected to this gimbal control unit. Here it's important uh, to read this side up. So up means it will be glued on the copter. And then you have a lot of connection ports which all go to this gimbal cable. Three. Three different sizes. You can connect them wrong. And you have an S-Bus connector here, PC, that will mean the USB cable for firmware updates and some, something like that. Here's the power cable and PVM. PVM means power wave modulation, I hope so. Uh, so this is the, the connection that the, the communication standard it uses. So over one servo cable you have the gimbal connected. Here you have G for ground, ground is black, of course polarity should be correct, you can shrink wrap this. So now I will mount the standoffs for the gimbal plate. So this part of the gimbal is attached direct to, directly to the copter. 
and the other plate will be connected through these rubber thingies here. They are very soft and I, I used different ones now for different copters. And I'm curious if they will block all the vibrations from the copter, if any. But every copter has vibrations. So for rubber thingies, screw the blade down. I would say the battery compartment is in the front. The cables are in the back. I fit it down through this hole and attach it on these rubber bobbin things. Okay, so now I have the gimbal sitting there, vibration isolated or dampened. There is the GoPro connector. The so last thing we connect is this gimbal control unit box. And you can't do anything wrong here. So once you connect this, you have a nice cable tree here. And you would use some double-sided tape. So it's really easy. Yeah, of course I forgot something. <laughs> the props. But normally if you have a new quad, you would mount the props just before takeoff. You wouldn't want to mount it in the initial phase where you set up the cup for the first time. Because if something goes wrong and it spins up, you would be in trouble. Okay, and because it went so well, I will also try to install this uh, video transmitter with the SPV antenna and with the cable here. It's one cable with power and signal coming or going into here. Well, it's easy. The video cable here coming out of the transmitter goes into this servo style cable. And the other thing here is a power plug. We need the second power and this will power the video transmitter and the video transmitter has a little voltage regulator as it seems here. Power source can be 2S to 6S. If I hooked up everything correct, I can now tape it and then make a test run. Okay, so here is the video transmitter and I this dual-sided tape strong. And just make sure that the antenna here doesn't get into the 360 degree freedom of the gimbal. Now also glued the gimbal control unit here and uh, yeah here is a little tape with the description which is the PC port for firmware updates because the the writing is on the other side which is not so clever. So here we have the smartphone mount which is a nice option. You can see the flight parameters on your smartphone display. So the same evening that I wanted to just to do a quick look in the box, do an unboxing video, I then decided to mount the gimbal and the FPV set. And now let's see if we can take a look in the Hero app. Now with one press you just see the status of the battery, it's full. If you press it once and then hold it for two seconds, it's turned on. It's pretty much the same as the Phantom. The gimbal is turning or initializing. No. Let's see the landing gear for the first time. No. <laughs> it's it's quite heavy in one hand, but that's the way it looks. Uh, very nice. The same evening I just wanted to do a short unboxing. I ended up installing the gimbal and the video transmitter and play around with it and yeah, really was an easy 
is this thing, this thing to get running. So on one side we have the camera pan which is 360 degree. The way uh, the pan works is that if you move it all the way to one side it slowly turns, it makes a really slow pan movement and it never stops. Uh, it has 360 degree or even more. It turns infinitely. And if you move the knob in the middle, it stays where it is. The tilt is somewhat different because the tilt is not infinite. You have 90 degree of tilt. Now it's all the way right, which means it looks straight. And if you move it a bit just, you moved it to center position now, it will no, turn slowly and end at, let's say, 45 degree. If I move all the way to the left, it turns 90 degree down. And I'm not sure if you notice it, but if you move it all the way to up again, it starts fast and at the end point it gets slow. So that makes a really nice uh, pan or tilt. Also, if you look down, it goes fast at first and then it slows down until it reaches 90 degree down. So that's set up really nice. The speed is okay, it doesn't have to be faster. The monitor from the FPV set, 7 inches, it's really bright. It can go like 80% contrast higher color you you have a zoom mode you can zoom 4x3 or 69 which makes everything a bit broader yeah GoPro is not optimal because GoPro life out is in 69 uh, squeezed into a 4x3 format so that's why it looks a bit weird uh, Probably this is the better setting. Then the sunshade around it and it will really give you good results in the sun. Now, there's this receiver in the back with the channel switch and an SPV antenna. We'll see about the range. So let's see the landing gear. There. <laughs> That's nice and now the cam is all and as it's a 3x gimbal I can yaw around it only moves slow with the copter's nose heading so this is really good if you fly in the wind and you get gusts shaking the copter the cam would be very nice stable. Okay, landing gear down please. Really nice. Okay, so on the back you see a really bright LED with the status. Okay, so now to connect to the ghost I will choose the TTR network, TTR and some code. And the password is on the sticker on the back. I'm connected to the Wi-Fi. Now I start my TTR Hero app. Altitude zero. Okay, so the first thing you get when you're connected is a five second altitude zero. Altitude broadcast. Five second is way too altitude much. Altitude zero. Altitude zero. I opt to disable it because I can also watch it on the display. If hate is critical, you can have it to like every ten seconds or every thirty seconds. So, but let's go on the, on the welcome screen. Flight information, settings and news. In flight information you see that I don't have any satellites in here. The altitude is uh, estimated on a barometric reading, I s I'd say. Distance. Battery capacity, that's of course very interesting for us. Flight time, flight mode, landing. Okay, so I'm in landing mode. 
This is this switch here. I can now go into take off mode. It will not automatically automatically take off. It's just uh, ready for take off mode, I'd say. And all the way in the bottom is the back landing mode. Of course, this all just works with GPS. Follow me. Follow me. Yeah, we have to try that out later. Follow me. In settings, battery alert at 15%. I'm vertical speed. I want at least 4 meters per second vertical speed. And I want the flying speed of, let's say, 10 meters. Set roll and pitch sensitivity to 45 and weight compensation to 80% if you're using the gimbal. Some more findings about the, the blinking LED here. That's normal, that's not low power warning or something. That's a bit weird. If you have a low voltage warning, it will blink green and make this beeping sound permanently. So, took a look at the prop dimensions and standard props are these plastic ones. Uh, and they are 11.5 props. But I have here this wonderful Aeronaut Chem Carbon ones. They are 12.5. And they are, normally they are very efficient and, and very silent in the air. So I see if I can uh, use these. Of course, in the first fight, I will stay with the, with the standard ones. And another test flight we can see if the 12.5 also do work I, I, I would I would think they work if you don't give it full throttle all the time and we can then see if the 12.5ers here are more efficient which I I estimate they are uh, they do fit quite tight but they do so I'll let you know if these work Uh, the other thing I did this this morning is use the Hero app and do the compass calibration. Here you have to push a button on the app and it's divided in a horizontal and vertical uh, compass calibration. And well, But the, the thing is the same. You say horizontal uh, calibration, then it the LED flashes and you hold it uh, horizontal and, and spin it 360 degrees. Then on the app you go on to vertical, you hold it nose down and spin it 360. And then you click save calibration. And one nice feature is you then see the calibration which uh, data which should be a circle. You see it on the display and that's really good to see if there are any disturbances. The other day then I could test fly it in our yard and once again this is before I sent it back for inspection because I wasn't 100% happy with the flight characteristics. I mean here it looks like it flies really steady and okay but on the controls it was very floppy and responsive. You can't set exponential values on the transmitter um, but I had the sensitivity of the controller really low so it should should have felt better and also one motor sounded weird to me but um, here you see the onboard footage from the not so good Amkov can and in different frame rates so it, it looks not smooth here but when the landing gear is down, you see how much the gimbal can keep the camera straight. And you also see vibrations on the landing gear, which I not so like. It really looks awesome in the air. It hangs down the gimbal. This also reminds me of these Star Wars drones. This was an automated landing. We had a switch function, they work good. 
Yeah, because it it doesn't fly so steady. I was asked if I'm drunk, but I wasn't. <laughs> so after the flight, it was four and a half minutes of flying time here. I looked at my charger, how many milliamps I can recharge in, and I came to 1400 milliamps and calculated that you will get 15 minutes if you use all the 80% of the 6000 milliamp battery. This should uh, show the battery status, which to me looks below 50%. Uh, the app, however, says 55%. Thanks for watching this longer build video and short flight test. I hope to get it back soon from the vendor and can do more FPV flying and f really flight tests on the field. And even mount a good GoPro 3 and see how decent the video stabilization will be and how good it can look. Uh, if you missed the first part, uh, check out the link here. And also, if you watch this some point in the future, you can now continue to the third part. Thanks for watching. Bye.